right, <clears throat> so we got Brennan here with, what year is this? I need 62. 62. 62. Yep. How the heck did you find this? <laughs> Through Ted, believe it or not. Really? Uh, yeah, the uh, guy I bought it from, longtime client of Ted's. I had found one that was on Facebook Marketplace that was ripped apart in a million pieces. And uh, Ted was like, well, there's a guy that has one that's like running and driving, and if you want that one instead, he'd probably be willing to let it go. And so I was like, yeah, I'll come down and take a look at it. I've been looking for like an MGD or a Spitfire or something along those lines for years, and uh, this kind of fell into my lap. I appreciate it because it's a lot more uncommon than those cars, a lot more unique, you, and so... Uh, you don't see a lot of these yeah, around. No, no. You actually, you see more Tigers, despite the fact that they made more of these by this point, you know. So many have been lost and converted into Tigers and stuff that you uh, definitely, especially these early cars, you don't see a lot of them anymore. Though. And where was this made at? Uh, this was a British car. Uh, obviously, um, I don't remember what specific area. It's a Roots Group car, so they were kind of like British Leyland, but they owned a bunch of the kind of smaller random things. They had Talbot, they had um, like Humber and Hillman and all those random little marks. Uh, and so, yeah, it was built over there. Then Carol Shelby got a hold of a couple of these and threw Ford V8s into them and made the Tiger. And I've heard those are a little <laughs> sketchy, aren't they? Yes, <laughs> yes. They, they are either kind of death traps or they take a whole lot of money to turn them into not death traps. Yeah, like actual right. drivable cars. That was why he ended up switching to the Cobras because the, the AC platform worked a lot better. But, uh, and what's the power plant on this? Do you want uh, to pop the hood? A, yeah, 1700 cc four cylinder. Uh, Proprietary in And what's the significance behind the Alpine? What was... I actually don't know off the top of my head. I don't know why. Wow. Alpine. But it is not to be confused with Alpine from France. The, uh, the A110. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And this is how many cc's did you 1700, say? 1700. 1700. Yeah. And what, what horsepower wise, do you, what do you think it makes? <laughs> it was like 85 from factory. That's so, pretty good yeah, for, for this yeah. small of a car. Yeah, yeah. And are They're those uh, twin Webers or? Twin Zeniths. Zeniths. Which, yeah, which were like never on anything. And everybody hates them. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, people go back and forth. People, some people love them, some people hate them. I always get comments on them because of the flat top filters, but uh, they're, they're, they've, they've served me well, they've been fine. And what <clears throat> parts wise, you know, can- It's help? actually not that bad. Um, there's a company on the East Coast, a company on the West Coast. Uh, they are uh, pretty traditional in so far as you get a PDF catalog and you have to write down your parts numbers and give them a call and like actually physically order them over the phone. There's no like. Online. So you can still so, get. Yeah, yeah. Sunbeam Specialties in California basically reproduces or has like new old stock for everything but the body panels. Wow. For the most part. So like from their catalog you could pretty much build one of these from the ground up almost as long as you have the shell but uh yeah the the kind of cool thing about this one is that it is all original original engine original carbs original transmission original like everything so many of those have or so many of these have been taken and like given four v6s given the yeah. carburetor like conversion kit given the auto transmission yes yeah. you know five speeds overdrives full nine yards it's all original which is pretty like even more hard to come by than just the car itself is one completely unchanged. And you seem to drive this car <clears throat> like everywhere. So Quite I mean, <laughs> reliability wise, has it been pretty good? Yeah, it's been fine. Um, it's probably left me stranded less than your average old British car, which is wow. been nice. I've only had to like tow it once or twice over the three and a half years I've owned it now. So, really? Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty great. Uh, yeah, on, and honestly, more than one of those times had more to do with some of the reproduction aftermarket parts that I put on, had put on it than uh, really anything with the car itself. So, yeah, it's been great. And is, the way this is currently, is, is this how you would have got it from the factory? Yeah. Hard, you could got a hard top with it? Could, yeah, that's a factory hard top. Um, those came with the car, very rare option, very hard to find. Um, I just got it. This is not original to this specific car as far as I know, obviously. Yeah. Uh, I just got this from uh, New Mexico and had it shipped up here. Um, it's still a work in progress. It's got some things. Yeah, looks so really good though. But yeah, for an original, you know, 60 year old piece. In uh, brake wise, are they drums all the way around? Drums in the back. Uh, discs in the front? Discs in the front, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
For 63? Yeah, 62. 62? Yeah. yeah, it was the first uh, first British car with roll-up windows. Really? Oh, yeah, all the ones from this era didn't have the roll-ups, they just had the side panels like the um, Yeah, interior's all original. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, four speed I presume? Yeah, four speed non-sinker first. Okay. Yeah. And... I mean, this interior is original <laughs> interior? Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh, looks amazing. Well, let's hear you uh, start it up. Yeah, sure. Hear the uh, exhaust note of this fine engine. Yeah, close the road. And keep it open. Right. Yeah. You can hear all the rattles in there. Well, that's good. Rattles <laughs> means that the parts are still there. I love this back end. Yeah. So in comparison to the EMGs or any of that, how does this drive? Um, it seems to get off the line quicker. That's what everybody else always says. Um, seemingly do a pretty good job of beating Craig's BGT. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> This ride's pretty nice over here. For some reason, and you know, I don't necessarily feel like I have enough experience with all of them. They're like, I've driven these, I've driven like bug eye sprites, I've driven TR6s and stuff, but I don't feel like I have enough experience to say like one way or another. But what I've always heard is that the suspension in these cars was supposedly kind of advanced for the time and you know is somewhat better than a lot of the contemporary cars. Uh -huh. I don't know how much truth there is to that. I but like that's that. What people always say. It's uh, springs in the front, leaves in the back, like usual. Wow, even your windows roll down? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. That's first, amazing. First car with roll down windows. Wow. Thanks for taking me for a spin in this. Anytime. 
it's so funny because I mean you do all the same routes that we do like right. Glenwood and I'm like that's the yeah. only sunbeam I've ever seen somebody do like a full-on road trip with you know you'll yeah. have the typical Sunday scrooges right that'll come out for you yeah. know village in at yeah. 9 a.m. and then put it back in the garage but you like legitimately drive this thing every yeah I put a uh... 10,000 miles on it last year. You put 10,000 miles on it last year? Wow. That's amazing. This year will be its first Glenwood trip. Hopefully it goes well. <laughs> it will. We're going to have a poo. Yeah. Just everybody will have a hangover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>